welcome to the first of our Anchors Home Academy book blogs. Each week, one of our teachers or our pupils will be sharing one of their favourite stories with you for you to enjoy via our school website and the link on the Anchor News. The first story to launch our book blog is the one that I'm currently sharing with my Year 6 reading group, which is a story called The London Eye Mystery. And as the title suggests, this is a mystery story. It's a bit of a crime thriller. And the key character, Ted, has to work out what has happened to his cousin during a trip to London and a visit to the London Eye. So I'm going to share the first chapter with you. Hopefully, it'll make you want to read the rest of the story. If it does, come and speak to me, because I've got some copies of it that you can borrow in school. Here goes. Chapter one. A giant bicycle wheel in the sky. My favourite thing to do in London is to fly the eye. On a clear day, you can see for 25 miles in all directions because you are the largest observation wheel ever built. You are sealed into one of the 32 capsules with the strangers who were next to you in the queue. And when they close the doors, the sound of the city is cut off. You begin to rise. The capsules are made of glass and steel and are hung from the rim of the wheel. As the wheel turns, the capsules use the force of gravity to stay upright. It takes a full 30 minutes to go round. From the top of the ride, my sister Kat says that London looks like Toy Town and the cars on the roads below look like abacus beads, going left and right and stopping and starting. I think London looks like London and the cars like cars, only smaller. The best thing to see from up there is the River Thames. You can see how it loops and curves, but when you're on the ground, you think it's straight. The next best thing to look at is the spokes and the metallic hawsers of the eye itself. You are looking at the only cantilevered structure of its kind on Earth. It is designed like a giant bicycle wheel in the sky, supported by a massive A-frame. It is also interesting to watch the capsules on either side of yours. You see the strangers looking out, just like you are doing. The capsule that is higher than yours becomes lower than yours, and the capsule that is lower becomes higher. You have to shut your eyes, because it makes a strange feeling go up your esophagus. You're glad the movement is smooth and slow. And then your capsule goes lower, and you're sad because you don't want the ride to end. You'd like to go round just one more time, but that's not allowed. So you get out feeling like an astronaut coming down from space, a little lighter than you were. We took Salim to the eye because he'd never been up before. A stranger had come up to us in the queue offering us a free ticket. We took it and gave it to Salim. We shouldn't have done it, but we did. He went up on his own at 11.32 on the 24th of May and was due to come down at 12.02 the same day. He turned and waved to Cat as he boarded, but you couldn't see his face, just his shadow. They sealed him in with 20 other people whom we didn't know. Cat and I tracked his capsule as it made its orbit. When it reached its highest point, we both said, now, at the same time, and Cat laughed and I joined in. That's how we knew we'd been tracking the right one. We saw the people bunch up as the capsule came back down, facing northeast towards the automatic camera for their souvenir photo. There were just dark bits of jackets, legs, dresses and sleeves. Then the capsule landed. The doors opened and passengers came out in twos and threes, all walking off in different directions, faces smiling. Their paths probably to never cross again. But Salim wasn't among them. We waited for the next capsule, and the next, and the one after that. He still didn't appear. Somewhere, somehow, in the 30 minutes of riding the eye in his sealed capsule, he'd vanished off the face of the earth. And this is how having a funny brain that runs on a different operating system from other people's helped me to figure out exactly what had happened. <laughs>